What better way to kick off this Star Wars season, everybody, than looking at a thing that was made from Star Wars that nobody likes anymore, or oh. even did at the time? Oh my god, James, coming out right now, we've, we've got The Rise of Skywalker, the final movie in the new Star Wars trilogy. We're doing Caravan of Garbages every week, a trilogy till we get there. And not only that, but just recently, Disney Plus has, has gotten online mm. everything, everything Star Wars, every incredible moment from Star Wars you could possibly experience in your own home. So why not instead watch three episodes of a really bad cartoon that nobody likes and nobody watched? <laughs> I guess people watched it at the time. Well, they actually put a lot of money into this. Did We've they? talked about it before. It's called Star Wars Droids. Lo and behold, we're back. All the characters <laughs> that we vaguely remember. Because this is like the follow-on episode. I Jan think. is back. Jess is back. Uncle Gundy is back. <laughs> I think. Was that his name? <laughs> Uncle Gundy. Probably. That was probably all of their names. Yeah, so this, I believe in this series, it's C-3PO and R2-D2. Yep. They go between different masters. Yes. And with each master, they go on little adventures. So, mm. so at this point, this is like episode six, seven, and eight. Yeah. Of the first season? Yeah. Uh, then, We're not doing this again, by the no, way. No, absolutely We're never not. coming back to Well, this. I mean, what I've learned from this is, because we watched the first couple of episodes, yeah. and I'm like... I've got an inkling about this show, and then by the time I watched all of these episodes, I realised every episode is just 22 minutes of R2-D2 and C-3PO falling over. It's fucking... Just constant falling it's over. It's Prattfall City, this It show. really is. Yeah. But the thing is, for the time, it's a good-looking animation per episode, because they did them in hour blocks. Yes. That's the way they made them. It was five hundred to 600,000 which is about 1.7 mil in today's money. Good Lord. So, you know, it looks better than, say, like, a He-Man. Where did it go? Well, Does it? I guess it's the same font as He-Man. Well, but it's smoother. Like, it's a smoother animation, I feel. Mm. What I also like about this is that everything's a little bit off. Like, there's, like, a Star Destroyer, but it's not quite right. There's an A-Wing, but it's not quite right. Mm -hmm, yeah. There's a Kylo Ren, but he's not quite right. That's why we're doing this. The main pirate in this is called Kaibo ren yeah. And I have a theory that... They have taken some elements from this series yeah, and brought the them over. Yeah, because the previous one had a female sand adventurer, sand desert. adventurer, desert woman, yeah, yeah. who bared some striking resemblances to Rey. Is what happened here is some of the script writers for the new Star Wars movies, they grew up on droids and they're like... Or it just imprinted in their brains. I have no idea. I know yeah. there's a big general grievous wheel at one point, if you remember <laughs> that. Yep. I think it's all just in the ether. But also, it's Star Wars and there's just so much of it. So yes. you're eventually going to throw enough random syllables together and you, you hit everything. You get a Kai something Ren, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's exactly. right. But yeah, and I mean, we know his name's Kaibo Ren because he says it every other sentence. Yes, he's he like, no one tricks Kaibo Ren. People regularly trick <laughs> Kaibo Ren. No one gets sneaks up on Kaibo. They it's what you're sneak. known for. Yeah, it's absolutely. You're famous for it. <laughs> so yeah, we could mostly skip the first episode because it mostly ties into the last one. It's about a prince getting back his home world or whatever. He needs yeah, the scepter some... and he gets it. No, no, he doesn't just get it. He gets the scepter back through a series of pratfalls for <laughs> 22 minutes. That's it's right. It's just people going, oh, now I've got the scepter. Oh, I've dropped the scepter. <laughs> now I've got, oh, I've dropped it. But yeah, that was the previous yeah. episode. So it's taken like four episodes to get to that point. But I perked up a couple of times for, for one. Kaibo Ren makes an appearance briefly, but then he's thwarted by IG-88. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yep. Finally, we've got to, like, a bounty hunter I recognise yeah. and want to see. Spoiler alert, he fucks off. We don't see him again. He's not in these following episodes at all. So in the second episode, which is called The Pirates of Tanuga, yes. which is Kylo Ren's, Kylo Ren's force. Do you mean Kaibo Ren? Do I? Oh, you mean Kylo Ren. <laughs> Look, in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to interchangeably say Kylo Ren and Kaibo Ren for a lot of this. I want everyone to know that's deliberate. Yes. And if we're talking about Kylo Ren, the Sith guy, we'll say Kylo Ren, the Sith guy. That's right. Or possibly Kaibo Ren, the Sith guy, <laughs> which again is deliberate. <laughs> okay, so... Kaibo Ren. Yes. He bears some resemblance to, to the original Kylo Ren. Rotund. He's rotund. Mm. Big Fu Manchu mustache. Black helmet. Oh, yeah. Is he an Asian stereotype? I don't think so. Because he's got the Fu Manchu, yes. but he, he's got that kind of piratey kind yeah, of voice. Yeah, he never struck me as an Asian stereotype. Okay. Yeah. Have you noticed, though, in a lot of these episodes, they go to some dreary, greater brown planet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they get stuck in a cave of, or a facility. Monsters attack, like yep. a monster attacks. Like a Loch Ness monster attacks yeah, at one like point. Yeah, or like a big dog or whatever happens. Big dog, in the, yeah. The some space one. wolves. And then they, they fight them off for whatever reason. Or what often happens also is... 
R2-D2, like, he ejects some sort of very useful gadget out of himself. Like, like a an o- giant, oxygen mask yes. or a giant bag. Giant, giant mattress <laughs> at some point, which I enjoyed a lot. I, I thought that was good because I wonder how, what other stuff he's got in there. People will be like, man, we're in a lot of trouble. This room's pretty dreary. Oh, a feature wall. Thank you, <laughs> R2-D2. <laughs> but there is also, there's a lot of weird shit that these droids do that they don't normally do. You mentioned the giant inflatable bag. Yes. They can swim. I can buy that R2-D2 can because we've seen him do it uh-huh. in Empire Strikes Back. Remember he goes under on yeah. Yoda's hunt world? Do you yeah, remember? I remember. But in this case, he's got a little outboard motor he's got on that. the top of his head. But C-3PO... Like a propeller-headed nerd. Yes, that's right. But C-3PO does so much running and swimming in this episode. Yeah. I just can't buy it. I can't even buy it when he picks up something because I've never seen his. I've never seen him make a fist. That's true. Yeah. I just don't know. You've never. We've never seen. Well, that's the thing. You. He doesn't strike you as a a droid with the the fortitude to go underwater. Yeah. Like he feels like again, he's a kit model designed by Anakin Skywalker back in the day. Yeah. And you'd you'd feel like that putting him underwater would immediately like seize him up. Mm. He'd take on water. He'd sink. Yeah. At one point in this uh, one of the episodes, I think he says something like, uh, "I always felt I was uh, assembled under a bad sign," <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah, in a way, you were in a, in a in way a you were assembled way. in a, in a slave encampment <laughs> by a man who became one of uh, the galaxy's greatest monsters. <laughs> so yeah, I guess so. So there's a moment in this episode, and really every episode, where the droids are captured. Mm-hmm. And in this particular episode, they're made to work for Kaibo Ren by loading missiles in, in his Imperial Star Destroyer, which he stole. By the way, red TIE fighters, just like in bloody... You Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Coincidence? That's- Unlikely, Mason. <laughs> They've borrowed that. Well, that's what that's an element I did like of this, that he he's acquired a bunch of junk stuff. Yeah. So some of his crew fly little TIE fighters with yeah. his face on the side. Love it. I love fun. it so much, yeah. yeah. So they get R2-D2 for some reason and him to, to load these weapons, and of course R2-D2 puts them in backwards. <laughs> like, you wouldn't leave these guys alone, no, would you? they're dangerous to you and themselves. <laughs> But mm-hmm. I will say this. Also, he's a little murderer. It, he's, it's, he's a massive it's murderer. Sabotage. It's you sabotage. It's sabotage the situation. Would. And I guess like every one of these episodes, it seems, them being captured, it's it's a decoy. Much like Luke's decoy in The Last Jedi. It all, it all ties together. You <laughs> think he's really there, but he's yeah. a hologram boy, isn't he? It's a decoy, yeah. <laughs> That's uh-huh. right. Look, I don't remember much else from this episode other than they defeat Kylo, Kaibo Ren. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Shouldn't have paused, shouldn't have hesitated. I shouldn't have. Go with whatever. And then he gets captured, and then at the end they have a, they have a little bath together. They have a little oh, oil that's bath. That's right, yeah. Which is something from Star Wars canon. And legends, it would seem. These the aren't droids canon. have a little oil bath. Yeah, it happens in A New Hope. C-3PO huh. is like raised out of one. He's like, I love oil baths, man. They're my fave. Huh. So the follow-up episode and the final episode is called The Revenge of Kaibo Ren. Sounds very familiar to the action that's going to be taken in bloody The Last Skywalker. Oh, absolutely. Right? Can you believe all these tie-ins? It cannot be a coincidence, Mason. Absolutely not a coincidence. Personally, if I was going to do some revenge, mm. I'd wait a bit, I reckon. How many If I was episodes? Kaibo Ren or possibly Kylo Ren, I'd wait more than one episode <laughs> is how long I'd wait. So he's also so he's not happy though that he's been made a fool of, like Kylo Ren in the Last Jedi. If you it all recall, ties together, doesn't it all it? ties together. Yeah. So he's rescued by uh, by one of his comrade boys, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He comes in and he's like, "I'm with you, Kaibo Ren." One of the knights of Kaibo Ren. That's right. I know this is something you appreciate, though. Are you going to talk about how the episode's ended? <laughs> We're not quite there yet, uh. unfortunately. <laughs> They've got a, he's got a stun disc on his hand. Oh, yeah, stuns are good. You, you love the return of the stun. I love the return of the stun. It's so very rarely used. Oft used. It's a kill universe. It's a universe for, where the kill setting is very much favoured in the Star Wars universe. I mean, you look at the Mandalorian, he's disintegrating blokes left and right, isn't he? That's right. He's, he doesn't give a shit. This one, though, it's a, it seems like some kind of off-brand version. Oh, First yes. of all, because it's palm held. Oh, and yeah. it shoots like a purple laser from memory. It's like that thing you're talking about with the staff where it just goes from person to person and everyone's kind of stunning each other, just <laughs> just kind of in, in a row, just kind of making it if all happen. If the Three Stooges existed in a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, they would be passing a stun disc. I honestly can't remember whether they put him back in jail or they murder him or he just walks off screen. How does Kaibo Ren end this series? Because he certainly doesn't come back. I looked into it. Do you remember? Let me think. I did watch it. I watched it literally before coming over here so let me think they're like we tricked you Kaibo Ren and he's like oh boo I'll have my revenge again he won't I reckon they probably just chuck him in jail yeah and then later R2-D2 comes in and murders him <laughs> he uses that little buzz sort of cut his yes I while he that. sleeps yeah well he's only bad news isn't he do you mean R2-D2 or Kaibo Ren so this is a show that we're never gonna visit again and it's interesting you say you know, that no wow no 
I think I made the promise a while back that we'll do like the trilogy of these episodes. And okay. seeing as the Skywalker saga is wrapping up, yeah. cannot we too mm. leave this series be? Let, let's, how about this? When they bring the Skywalker saga back in a new trilogy of yeah. films in a mm. few decades or whenever, which they almost certainly will. Yeah. Huh? Why am I saying this? We'll come back. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a goofy show, but it, look, it's, it's four kids... And I, I don't know whether it, I would have liked it at the time because I, I don't really, I don't like anybody in it. Like, there's no yeah, definitive right. heroes, and I guess it's sort of supposed to be C three PO and R two D two, but then they're, they're not really those kind of characters. I think they're always getting in fist fights and shit. <laughs> yeah, some of the dialogue I feel is quite accurate sure. to those characters, but I feel like if this show was on when I was a kid, like it was on TV in the morning or when I got home from school or something, I feel I would watch it, mm. but I wouldn't enjoy it, <laughs> and I'd be like, well. Well, I'm watching this because there's robots and space battles and stuff, but mm. there's got to be something out there that's better. And then I would just stare out the window, <laughs> dad into the distance, you know, just wondering what else is out there. But I, I think it's interesting, though, because people say that, you know, they wiped the previous continuity, like the Star Wars Legends. But Star mm. Wars Legends also wiped the continuity of this, as did the prequels. Because in the prequels, C-3PO and R2-D2, they kind of go from Anakin and Padme and they get handed over to Captain Antilles, and the next time we see them, they're in A New Hope. Right, right? so there's no well, time Well, they're technically for them. in Rogue One, I guess, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, so there's no time for them to get into these droids-based yes. adventures. Right. So there's already been a history of just kind of wiping the previous thing out. And in, in the hustle and bustle, much yes. like an episode of Droids, this has been lost to continuity and time. It's been pratfalled out of existence. Put it on Disney Plus, you cowards. I'll never watch it, but do it. We want to downvote it. <laughs> Whatever you can do on Disney Plus. You can put your knee through the TV. Thumbs down and <laughs> knee through the TV. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week. Uh, every Tuesday, as a matter of fact, we've got a couple more coming up in relation to Star Wars because, hey... It's the most wonderful time of the year. Anyways, uh, if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, what is it? And do you think it's a good show and why? Did you watch it as a kid and you've got a lot of nostalgia for it? Did you watch it as an adult and you're an idiot? <laughs> and you like it for some reason? <laughs> All of those things are valid. Somewhere in the middle, I don't know. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday morning. If you're on the way to work and you're like, I would like something to listen to, or you're not on the way to work, you're doing a different thing. Maybe you've come off a, a week-long droids binge. Oh, my goodness. You're like, I want to get the taste of droids out of my mouth and that knee out of my television. <laughs> Then that's there. It might be worth checking out. It is linked below. But thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate it. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We will see you next week. Bye.